Oh, hi, Andrew. Hey, bro. How's it going? Good, man. We ready to do this? I'm ready. Dad joke battle? Dad joke battle. Let's do it. You laugh, you lose. You're going down. If you're a Canadian in the kitchen, what are you in the bathroom? European. That's pretty good. What kind of shoes do ninjas wear? What kind of shoes do ninjas wear? I don't know. Obviously sneakers. <laughs> what do you call security guards working at Samsung? Guardians of the galaxy. I don't get it. What do you call it cheese that isn't yours? What? Nacho cheese. Why would someone get kicked out of the Apple store for farting? Because there were no windows. How do you make a tissue dance? Oh. You put a little boogie in it. To the person who stole my Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. <laughs> <laughs> you really uh, excelled at that joke. <laughs> okay, we're done here. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Hey everybody, my name is Andrew, I'm one of the pastors here, and welcome to CA Church Online. Today we are celebrating Father's Day weekend, and so happy Father's Day to all the dads who are watching. And speaking of fathers, we have Nick. Uh, Nick is overseeing hey all of our creative and communications that happen at the church. He does an amazing job. Oh. And so he's actually a dad of three, which you can tell by his horrible dad jokes. There he is a seasoned father. So uh, tell us about your kids, their ages, and what you do at the church. Yeah, oh, so at the church, I am the Creative and Communications Director, as you were saying, and I'm primarily responsible for all of the video right now that we are producing. So evidently... So a pretty minimal job. So, really. Yeah, I've got nothing to do during COVID, <laughs> yeah. nothing at all. <laughs> but yeah, as you said, I've got three kids. Yeah. Uh, me and my wife, Laura, have uh, uh, a four-year-old, uh, a three-year-old, and an almost two-year-old. Nice. And, Busy. Uh, yeah, Busy. Micah, Levi, and Theo. And they amazing. are amazing. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little awesome. bit of a handful sometimes, but definitely Of course, amazing. of course, that's amazing. And you're obviously a father as well, you've got- Yes, one boy, Benjamin, just turned two. And uh, yeah, he's, he's amazing, we're just so blessed. Well, if you didn't notice, we are somewhere different than the church right now. We are actually yes. in Andrew's, uh, at Andrew's house, uh, right outside his garage, where he is working on uh, a car here that he's been working on for about like four years. Four years, probably four another years so. another 60 more years to go. It's for <laughs> my great, 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 great grandson. <laughs> but uh, one of the reasons we're here today is uh, because even though your dad wasn't a passionate car lover like yourself, a lot of the memories you have growing up with him revolve around cars. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah it's crazy. I was really reflecting on that. and. Uh, just thinking, you know, my dad didn't have a crazy passion for cars. He really could care less about cars. But uh, he knew that I had a passion and he saw that as I was growing up. And so, you know, when I was little, we'd build model cars together. And when I grew a little older, he took me to car shows. And uh, even just this little car right here that we have, this is a car that I built maybe 20 years ago when I was a kid. And uh, he would always tell me, hey, let the paint dry. And I didn't listen, got paint all over the walls. Hey, let the glue dry. I didn't listen, cars fell apart. So he was trying to teach me things along the way. But um, uh, it just really inspires me thinking, you know, someone like for me, for Benjamin, maybe there's something that I won't really have a passion for or a desire to be involved in. But my dad just came with me for everything, came to everything, uh, supported me with that passion. I've just learned that from him. I look up to him for that, and I want to bring that to my son, no matter what his hobbies, his passions are. Well, if you're watching with us today online, we want to say welcome. Whether you're watching online for the first time, you're joining us uh, after the fact, or you're meeting together in homes, thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we are going to have some worship time together, then we're going to hear a message, and then we're going to have a discussion time afterwards. Mm -hmm. And we invite you to take part in that discussion, whether that's with the people that you're with or online in the online chat if you're watching that with us. Uh, I encourage you to type in it. Type in it right now. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you got a good dad joke, I want to hear it. Um, <laughs> it's, I'm hoping it's better than ours. Well, that, they're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also want to draw your attention to the live prayer button. There's, if you're watching this live, there's a button that you can hit right now to have a one-on-one -on -one chat uh, yep. over text with a pastor. They're waiting to talk with you uh, at any time. It's also a great way if you just have any questions about what you heard today or about the, our church or anything, um, click that button and you'll be able to talk with someone. Uh, we want to be here for you. Mm. 
But in this time right now, we are gonna go and worship together. So I invite you, stand up and let's worship together. Tempts me to 
despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him. Look on him and pardon me. Let's sing this together. Behold him there, the risen land. My perfect, spotless righteousness. The great, unchangeable I am. The King of glory and of grace. One with himself, I cannot die. My soul is purchased by His blood. My life is hid with Christ on high. With Christ my Savior and my God. Because the sinless Savior died. My sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied. To look on him and pardon me. To look on him and pardon me. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the sacrifice in Jesus that we could be here today, forgiven, restored, redeemed, set free. We're so grateful for that sacrifice. And we just continue to look to you today. Would you be our hope? Would you be our joy? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for leading us in worship today. We're going to continue in a posture of worship by receiving our tithes and our offerings. As a people of God, we've been invited to give generously and sacrificially. If you are new to our church or if you're just a guest today, there's no obligation to give, but you are welcome to if you would like. Let's pray together. God, we ask that you would take these funds that are being given in faith today. We ask that you would use them to further your kingdom, that you would use them to make the good news of Jesus Christ known in our cities and around the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello CA Church, I want to start today by saying Happy Father's Day to all the dads in our congregation. We see you and we love you. And now for some announcements. Firstly, thanks for participating in the church family survey. We had just about 300 families participate in this. Your responses were really helpful as our leadership team makes decisions moving forward. In this season, we believe that the best option for our church family is gathering in homes with small groups of people to engage in our online weekend service, worship together and pray. For those of you who are already gathering in homes, we want to remind you that we want to do everything possible to do this safely. You can head to our website to find our guidelines for how we can honour the government during this time and keep everyone safe. Guys, I'm so excited to tell you that this week, the second tilt up happened in our building campaign, which means that the outer walls are now all up and standing. This is a milestone in our building campaign and we can't wait for you all to see it. 
CA Church family, you might have been wondering this whole time, why is John, our young adults pastor, sitting down at a table for announcements? Is the guy lazy? Why isn't he standing? Well, I'm doing this because next week I'm going to be teaching on the Lord's Supper in our sermon series. And as part of this service, we're going to have an opportunity as the family of God to take communion together. And so I want this to kind of be a visual reminder for us to get ready for next week. There's two things we can do. The first one is this, get some bread and some juice. Get some bread and some juice, head to the store safely, or if you can't do that, call someone up, get some bread and some juice so that you can participate next week. And secondly, I would love for as many of us to be doing this together as possible, which means that if you're someone who usually watches the service afterwards, that you haven't been joining the live streams, can I invite you to consider joining a live stream next week, to actually be on the chat with other people physically present so that we can feel more a part of this communion service together. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you. Hey everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brad, I'm one of the pastors at CA Church, and I am very excited to be with you this Father's Day weekend as we continue our series, We the Church, looking at what it means to call ourselves the community of God, what it means to live in our family of faith, what it means to live out the reality of a God who so loved the world that he gave his only son and that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What does that look like in the everyday? This brown house you see behind me is the house that I spent the first 12 years of my life. You can actually still see uh, where the paint is a little darker from where a van crashed into our house, sending my parents' bed jettisoning across their bedroom. I was sleeping outside in the, the back porch and came running in around four in the morning. And even though I haven't stepped foot in this house for over 35 years, I still feel as though I have the entire place mapped out in my mind. I can remember where my bedroom was when I shared it with my brother, both upstairs when uh, I had the top bunk and downstairs in the basement when we shared a larger room. I can remember uh, where the laundry was, where my dad's workshop was, my sister's bedroom, which, bedrooms, which I was not allowed to be in, the, the cool black iron fireplace that we had in the living room and the far less cool bright red carpet that we had all over the, the living room as well. I remember the green and yellow linoleum, our, our, our back porch where my brother and I used to sleep overnight in our sleeping bags on cots reading Archie comics. And I, I remember the, long, the, the large concrete slab in the back where my dad would pour water so that we could skate in the winter. I remember the, the crawl space underneath the house and all the tools that were stored there. I remember the garage in the back where my mother stepped on the gas instead of the brake and crashed right through the wall and almost into the, the next garage. Sorry, Mom. I remember where the hamper was, where I'd hide for hide and go seek, and, and the, the pitch black closet where I, I woke up after sleepwalking, standing in a pitch black closet, not knowing where I was, screaming until my sister came and helped find my way out. Throughout my life, even as I look at this house now, I remember different conversations at the dinner table, conversations when my parents would ask us about our day, about what we did, about whether or not I'd stolen my sister's chocolates, guilty. I remember being confused why when I sneezed in the peanut butter one morning, everyone was grossed out and nobody else wanted any. It, it became my peanut butter that day. Every, every room in this house has a memory attached to it of my, the first 12 days of my life. This house is made up of little events and little memories that formed me into who I am and in many ways were the building blocks of, of our family, even today. Uh, of coming home to a family that, that was not perfect but was consistent. A father and mother who, who loved us, who corrected us when we made mistakes, and who embraced us when we asked for forgiveness. A family of imperfect consistency. I can remember my oldest sister standing up for me to, to another parent in the neighborhood who was mad at me when I was being yelled at. She stood between us. I can remember my other sister teaching me about music in her room and her collection of, of records. And, and what it, she taught me what it meant to spend a lot of time and accept a younger sibling even when he was annoying. I remember a brother who, even though we fought a lot, would stand up for me when someone had roughed me up. And I remember things like my father kissing my mother in the kitchen when he'd get home from work. And he'd always say, give me a kuss. 
And I remember wondering why he said it that way. I remember my, my dad telling bedtime stories about Christians who, who stood up for their faith even when things got difficult. And I can remember the day he told me, when I asked him about the scar on his chin, he told me that he received it when he was in the Air Force barracks praying when someone threw a boot at him and caused him to have a scar for life. But the two strongest memories that I will always hold of my father are his faith and his forgiveness. And it was modeled for us every day, in little ways and big ways. We, we all gave my father ample opportunity to practice forgiveness, and he took advantage of it every single time. But I also remember that my dad was quick to ask forgiveness. If he had ever disciplined too hastily or raised his voice, I remember hearing his, his, step, his uh, footsteps coming down the stairs, and I thought, oh, I'm about to get more, and often it was actually to come to apologize for disciplining too rashly. The strongest visual memory I have of my father throughout my teenage years in a different house than this one was to see him kneeling next to his bed in prayer every night. That is burned into my memory. There was, a never, there was never a question for any of us in our home of who or what my father built his life on. In my father, there was a strong consistency of faith in the work of Christ and a continued display of faithfulness to his family. During the last week before my father went to be with Jesus, which was the trajectory of his whole life, it was the week that, that COVID took over the world, his room at the care home was full of family members. My mother, all of us children, some of our children, and in some cases, our children's children. All of us confessing our love for my dad. And it wasn't because we had memories of a father who, who took us on big vacations every year who gave us treats or gave us what we asked for. In my childhood, I don't ever remember going on an epic camping trip or, or big family vacations that I could boast to all my friends about. I know we went to Disneyland, but I actually have no recollection of that trip. I was very young. I, I only know what the rest of my family tells me, which was that I cried all the way through Pirates of the Caribbean, but I still said it was my favorite ride. I, I don't remember a lot of big things like that in our lives. Our family was was, was based on the long haul of every day walking together. And for my father, that meant to the best of his ability to do so empowered by and moving towards Christ. And it was because he understood the long faithful walk of a husband, of a father, as a Christ follower, he, he made allowances for others' faults, not only in our family, but among his friends. And he, he forgave anyone who offended him. He was he was acutely aware that Christ had forgiven him and so he would forgive others. And because of that, he was a man of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He always fought to make sure we knew we were in a safe, loving family. Always aimed for unity in our family. Never made us feel like our relationship was in jeopardy if we made a mistake. And always aimed to repair brokenness in our relationship. Now I tell you that story. <laughs> to tell you the story of the gospel and the church, and also to boast about my father a little bit. You know, throughout the, the New Testament, the invitation of the gospel has been an invitation into a new community, the church. The language used by Jesus and, and his disciples is of family. In 1 John 3, chapter 1, he says this, he says, See how very much our father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. Paul writes in Romans 12, Verse 5, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Again, the Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 2.19. So now you Gentiles, you, you who had no connection with God before, we're not part of God's family. You're no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Guys, Christianity, first and foremost, invites us into community. We are called into the church. When we are called to live as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called into community. We are called into family. There, there is simply no biblical idea of Christianity without the church. There is no Christian walk. There is no Christian growth. There's no Christian experience without the church, without Christian community. So the question we need to ask is what kind of family do we want to be? What kind of family do you want to be a part of? Because I know that many of you watching come from difficult families. Many have experienced what a dysfunctional family looks like. 
where, where time together is actually toxic and it's dehumanizing, where, where your mistakes are recorded in each other's hearts and minds so that they can be played back over and over and over again. That's not the kind of family that Christ wants us to create. In fact, he makes it clear that, that love for each other should be the hallmark of our church, the hallmark of the Christian community. In the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 35, it says, Let your love for one another, it will pr- or your love for one another, will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And, and in fact, it was this kind of love and, and service that turned the, heads, uh, the, the head of the ancient world. The people of the ancient world, leaders, the emperors, would would look at the church and see the way it loved each other and how it took care of each other as a family and would be blown away. That's why it's always been a demand of the gospel that the Christian community ought to display unity to a disunited world. I mean, has there ever been a time when there was more when this was more necessary, when there was more of a need to show unity to the world. There probably was, but it's definitely necessary now. The church is called to display love and unity, and it does its best work for the kingdom of God when it does so. The Apostle Paul writes a powerful description of how the church ought to function in its everyday life. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15, he writes this. He says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Listen, to call ourselves the church means we are entering into relationship with a group of people that in any other situation in the world, we may not possibly associate with. Galatians 3.28 describes it, says there's no longer Jew or Gentile. There's no longer slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And in that scenario, the, the church is called to model for a broken world, a broken culture, what it looks like to live in harmony, acceptance, forgiveness, and love. The long haul of Christian community is not built on a fantastic Sunday experience. The long haul of Christian community is not built on a revival, but on the everyday walking together, empowered by and moving towards Jesus Christ. And this can only be sustained, as Paul says, with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. This can only be sustained where there is an allowance for faults and where forgiveness is a part of the air we breathe. The everyday practice and assumption is that we do all we can to live in peace with one another. So we might need to ask ourselves today, is there a brother or sister in Christ we need to do a Zoom call with after this, would do with after this? Our faith cannot be built, strengthened, or fully experienced if we try to do it solo. It can also not be built up, strengthened, or fully experienced if we are only looking for the weekend experience or a big show. Christian community is covenantal, the Bible teaches us. It's not only about what we get out of it. it. It's saying yes to a community and saying through the through the big and the small stuff, the easy and the difficult stuff. When I when I feel like you're a blessing and when I feel like you're a curse, I am in this for the long haul. That is why we invite people to become members and say a public yes to our church, to say yes to doing life together for the long haul. It's why we invite you to community groups. It's not on the mountaintops, it's in the daily grind, the daily living, the flow of forgiveness for those who offend and and serving others with our lives where we find the true soil of the Christian life and the Christian experience. I tell you, traditionally, the, the, the Western church has loved the kinds of problems, at least the modern church, where we can just throw casseroles at. A broken leg, a new baby, help we can offer that has an end date. Where we, where, where we get fuzzy is when we're invited to walk next to those suffering from things like mental illness, ongoing marital problems, habitual sins, the, the invisible stuff where, that don't have an expiry date. We don't know how long we will have to support and love and forgive. See, but Christianity, the Christian community, it calls us to the long, faithful grind. 
that, we, that, that means we commit ourselves to being people of forgiveness. We have to be because as we become a part of the Christian community, a part of the church, we are joining in a covenant that says we're not going anywhere. So we will fight to live in peace with each other, support each other. And often that means asking for and freely offering forgiveness. The only way this works is if we make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends us. Some of you have heard me, me say this before when, when I speak of, of my marriage or of marriages. For, for my wife and I, we, we believe we are in a covenantal marriage, which means neither of us are going anywhere. Which means we need to be careful what we say to each other, how we treat each other, because it has implications not just in five minutes or ten minutes, but in five years and ten years and, and twenty and hopefully fifty years. Because I'm not going anywhere, so I'm going to have to live with what I say and what I do. It's the same if we want to be the community that Christ has called us to. Christian community is covenantal. It's in for the long haul. And the last thing I, I would say to you today is that Christian community is belonging for the broken. It's an opportunity for the broken to find healthy community. When it comes to my family, keenly aware that stories of families who stay together where there is never a question of whether or not you are loved, I know that's not the norm for many people. And then when they come to, to faith in Christ and enter into the church community, they come broken and they come wounded. They come having a, a very difficult time even accepting or even comprehending what a loving father is, what a loving community is. But I tell you, when the church, when it's done right, it's, it's the family that that person needs. A community that says, since God chose us to be the holy people he loves, we clothe ourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We make allowances for each other's faults, and we forgive anyone who offends us. We remember that God forgave us, so we forgave others freely. Above all, we cover everything with love, which allows the peace that comes from Christ to rule in our hearts. I mean, isn't that the kind of community that people are crying out for? That's the kind of community that, that steps next to the brokenhearted and says, we are with you for the long haul of every day, walking together, empowered by, and moving towards Christ. And if we don't do that, then we're not the church, at least not the church that Christ has called us to be. A community that displays unity to a disunited world, that says we are in this for the long haul, we don't care what you're bringing with you, that offers belonging to the broken. This is the call of the church and the invitation for all of those who call themselves Christ, follower, Christ followers, but, but have tried to do faith without the faith community. Church, I want to invite you uh, with, with these words of Paul in Colossians, let me leave you with this. In Colossians 3, chapter, uh, verses 16 to 17. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives so that you can teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus from his community, giving thanks through him to God the Father. God bless you, church. Well, thank you for joining us today, and thank you to the worship team and to uh, Pastor Brad for, for leading us today. We just wanted to say thank you for joining us, and we hope you guys had a good Father's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, in a bit, we are going to have a discussion time. If you are meeting together in homes, there's going to be just some discussion questions that we're going to put up on the screen, and or you can grab the online sermon notes to see those, um, or you can discuss it in the chat. And I'd encourage you to stay and, and do that. Um, but for right now, we're going to sign off and say Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I got a treat for you. You got a treat for me? If you just put your left hand at the back of your chair. Okay. I got you a little something. now. I tried to find, you got it, I tried to find Dad's. Dad's root beer. But I couldn't find Dad's root beer. But you did find. I did find a, &W a &W because you told me yesterday yeah. that you, one of your fondest memories with your dad is him taking you out to a &W. It is, it was a tradition. And when we had anything, anytime we had anything serious to discuss, yeah. he would take us one at a time to a &W, would yeah. get a teen burger and a and root beer. So that I couldn't awesome. find Dad's, but I knew that would mean a lot to you. So let's well, cheers. Well, Dad, if you're watching, Happy Father's Day, <laughs> and for all the other rest of you out there, have a good weekend. Happy Father's Day. Six feet cheers. COVID. Cheers. Oh, you're spilling everywhere. Ah! I ah! might... <laughs> I might have shaken it. <laughs> Hi, 
Church, how you are doing? I hope everyone is staying safe and stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. I miss you, Church. Hey, CA Church, Jonathan here. Wishing my dad and my grandpa a happy Father's Day. And to all the dads out there, happy Father's Day to you too. God bless. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day, Day dad. dad. You're awesome. We've got the best dad. Yeah. The rest of you are wrong. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. I love you so much. Thank you for all the adventures you have taken us on, Pa. We love you, Papa. Hi, CA Church. My name's Phoenix Aloysius, and I'm so excited for Father's Day. I'm going to tell you a little bit something about my dad. He's so nice, and he's such a great cook, and he's so loving. And I love him so much. And he's such a good cook. So good. Happy Father's Day! See you at church! Happy Father's Happy Day. 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 I love you. Thank you for everything you do. Have a good day. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for taking care of us and providing us with our daily needs. Thank you for supporting me and my siblings in what we do every day. Thank you for always being there for us. We, we love, love you. you. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. You're the best dad ever. We love you. Yay! Yay!